Well, it's Tuesday. It is. It is Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> and we were just we were just up at Promontory, and that was Sunday's show. Right. Just a couple of days ago, and um, and we wanted to show you these models. They are so neat. The Jupiter and the 119 by Bachman. Right. And. Um, it's really hard to get in the smaller scales um, these American style, the 440. They're just small and they usually do what they've done with, with these guys. They put the motor in the tender oh, and weird. then they put a drive shaft, which you can see exposed in there, mm. to the gearbox. Uh, I've actually seen some of these where they'll put the motor in here, but good grief. It's right. Just, so this has been. Pretty much the common solution with a lot of these, the, the River Aussie mm -hmm. uh, 440s and the 240 and that sort of thing, it, with a, a drive shaft. Historically, that hasn't run for stink. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Um, but Bachman seems to have really dialed these, these little guys in. When they first came out, they were oh. a little sketchy. Right. The most current version on the market is on Unbelievably good. Mm -hmm. These are one generation older than that. Mm -hmm. We bought these at Promontory. We did. And then we actually set them on the <laughs> rail at, <laughs> facing on top of the laurel tie, but yes. they, they fit neatly on top of the rail so that we could say Just that they'd, picture. <laughs> they'd actually been in the proper location. Right. Of course, we don't have a HO layout. No, but these were just too cool to pass up. They're too cool, and they've got the really nice paint jobs. The earlier ones didn't have a very nice paint job, and mechanically, they weren't great. Mechanically, these are pretty good. They're not bad. And the paint job is pretty darn good. And then the current version, if you find the current version, uh, which is all over the place, those are amazing. Those are really cool. I think, I think actually they do make a, a DCC with sound, which is more money, like $150 oh, right. or something, but something like that. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. But we just bought these for the display case since right. we don't have an HO scale. Right. And we do have a display case. So. That's, that's true. <laughs> we thought that that would be fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, this time of year, uh, our attention turns toward Promontory, and we were mm -hmm. just up there. We said, you know, let's do a Tuesday show. Right. On those bikes. You know, Greg Hardy's got the um, the precision scale. Right. And uh, his were done, I think they're precision, pretty, pretty much sure. They were done to half inch scale. Wow. And the precision scale just made the decision to model those things and not make them in any particular gauge. They just said, we'll make them in half inch scale. Mm -hmm. The gauge will be four feet, eight and a half inches, and it will be correct, and that's an end of it. Huh. So they won't run on anybody's railroad. <laughs> if you want to lay some track uh, in the very peculiar gauge that they are, but Greg just bought his to use as display engines, but he has fired them up and spiked down a few feet of track just to test it. Wow. And they, they're brilliant. Those are amazing engines. And uh, LGB, just uh, a couple years ago for the 150th anniversary, released a pair of these engines, I think $10,000. Wow. And they're not that good. I mean, they're okay. Don't mm. get me wrong, but for $10,000, uh, you should get the real engine. <laughs> <laughs> At least something you could pedal around the yard. <laughs> these these are a lot more affordable, and they're they're the scale that most people want. They're HO. Mm -hmm. They don't take up a lot of space. And they offer them in N. They do. They do offer mm. them, and how they make that work is beyond me. I don't know. Buy one and find out. Uh, that's a thought. But I've seen them running around on some of the N scale modular, mm -hmm. and they seem to do a pretty darn good job. Well, they're getting better with their technology for sure. That has been one of the things about model railroading technology is the technology has made smaller and smaller and smaller more possible. Mm -hmm. so, and it has made it possible for for engines like these um, to actually run pretty pretty well. Now these have never been run. This was the first time. This was the first. <laughs> so let's take one of these guys off the track. We'll just arbitrarily pick the Jupiter Which here. was easier than the way I thought they did it at Promontory <laughs> in 1969 when I learned about all of this in school. Yeah, they had it's to like, sort of... Somebody's got to back up, Somebody's going to have to back up because they're nose-to-nose the, nose Yeah, like and I was that. like, okay, what good's a transcontinental... Con <laughs> 
Continental Railroad. I can't talk Somebody's either. Somebody's got to back up all the way to Cincinnati. <laughs> that's right. Back up. Just well, keep they going. had sightings. They had yeah, sightings. Yeah, that's okay. what I learned later. <laughs> well, let's put some power to this guy and see which direction it takes off and runs. Ah, there it goes. It goes that direction. Mm-hmm. And? And that's fairly reasonable. Not bad. Operation, I think. Mm hmm I'm fairly impressed. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can make it go really slow. Mm -hmm. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. That's about as slow as it's going to go. Maybe it's not going to go any faster than that. No. Come on. Takes mm -hmm. a little encouragement. They're very stiff. As mm -hmm. I say, they've never been run. But for an engine that's not the slightest bit broken in or anything. Mm. Oh, come on. Come on, Keep. we can do you it. You can do it. The track is reasonably clean. Mm -hmm. It's mostly Let's just a, a problem with... Um, it seems to be loosening up just as we run it like this. Mm -hmm. We'll have to play with it a little bit yeah. more and see what it does. Come on, Jupiter. Well, oh, hey, there. Uh, you found first gear. <laughs> this power supply I'm using is... <laughs> Definitely falls into the category of garbage. Ah. Let's put the 119 on the rails. Mm -hmm. See what... Uh, Your tender's what? off a bit. There oh, we it's a, go. Oh, it's a wee ski wall. There we go. We'll keep them facing the right direction so they don't mm -hmm. have to back up to Cincinnati. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. Well, this one runs a little... I am seeing a, something of a problem. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Yo, see, I told you there was a problem. What's the problem? Um, the crankshaft, the, the drive oh, shaft. Oh, it's is, not spinning like it should. It isn't spinning square. There it goes. That's probably what's wrong. We may have to. Whoa! It's spinning square now! We may have to encourage it to, to mm -hmm. uh, behave itself a little. Hmm. Yeah, right. I'm Chasing that sure out the road is not what I want to do. What the issue is. Huh. It's all prug plugged in, plugged in properly. Make sure your locomotive hmm. is plugged. Ah, okay. Come on, little guy. I behaves. built the uh, the Mantua General years ago. Actually, I built two of them. Mm -hmm. I never could make the drive shaft work in that. Mm. But I found a trick that, that got rid of that exact problem, hmm. and that's that I replaced the drive line there with a piece of uh, rubber hose. Oh, then it just kind of stays flat. It's trying to then turn. Then the whole thing can kind of flex, and you don't mm -hmm. have to have a universal joint. Right. But for some Come reason, on, that skippy. one's all, it's all haywire. All over to one side. Mm. Oh, dear. When it goes, it goes. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it looks like it's trying to spin square, but then it's all yeah, wobbly. Yeah, it's just... Well, a silly thing. Fairly common oh, problems. Where it's, yeah, where it's going into the locomotive, it, uh, yeah. it's a little off It's at right the locomotive there. end for some mm -hmm. reason. It's off. Well, just something hmm. to... Something to try to figure out. Yep. Anyway, let's let's nose to nose these guys again for the famous photograph, and we'll right. get out some champagne bottles. And, yeah. and uh, well, these guys are really special to me because we bought these my first time able to go to this celebration ever. Yeah. And that's when we bought these, and it's like, mm, a little yeah. splurge. Was that? Uh, the year before the, the year before yeah. the big one. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. the 149th. Right. Anniversary of the driving mm -hmm. of the Golden Spike. So we were up there for that. It was my very first time attending it. There they are. A couple mm -hmm. of people. I've always loved the American style right. engines. They're, right. You know, people say, what's your favorite style of locomotive? And I'll say the ones that run on steam. I mean, I don't, well, I don't have a favorite. Right. Uh, Just this style of locomotive is my favorite because from one time I was a really little girl. To me, this was a train. This is a train, uh, yeah. I wanted a train, you know. 
And I was always a big boy fanatic and mm. the big, massive steam. And then my brother said, you know, you're missing the boat. It's the little 440s that are much more interesting. And the more he talked about it and the more he modeled it and that mm -hmm. sort of thing, the more I went, you know, I think he's right. But I still love the big engines mm -hmm. and I love the turn of the century engines, <laughs> the, the 10 wheelers. If, if it's yeah. steam, I love it. And now I've even grown to appreciate the 1825 little mobile tea kettles. Right. So uh, <laughs> if it runs on steam, I like it. Yeah. I love it, you yeah. know. And, and the early diesels, I like the early diesels. I just, right. I look at the modern diesels and people walk over there and they say, well, this is an EMD SD 43-2T. And you can tell that because of the vent right here, you see, and it's like, Phew. don't. <laughs> don't get it. Don't know that me, stuff at all. I just, I just think they're stinking cute. They are stinking cute. These qualify stinking and cute. Exactly. Well, right this one's cold. Together. So, <laughs> <laughs> so stinking, and this one burns on wood. So yeah, it's cute. a little yeah, more. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. more cute. Well, anyway, there they are, and they they run. <laughs> they're not going to get run much because we don't have a layout. And no. We mostly bought them for the display case, and that's, that's right. where they're headed right now. Is mm -hmm. back to the display case. Absolutely. So, uh, we unboxed them. They've been up in the attic. We need that little tiny golden spike in the middle. Hey, that's a thought. Right. We'll just model. We have a bunch of little teeny spikes, and we, we have do. a gold plating machine. Well, we actually have a bunch of LT spikes that are already gold plated. We bought them at oh, the, the Spike did. 150. Yeah, yeah, we did. So I'll just put one. Put one right there. Yeah, there in the go. display case. There you go. All happens. Well, anyway. You <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't been over to the channel, please head over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Right. And the way to, and you can like the movie too. Be and sure the, to do that. <laughs> be sure to like and click your <laughs> notification bell because people forget to do that. And then they say, why aren't we getting notified? It's like, well, it's a two-step process. You subscribe, then you click on the little bell and you set all your notifications to all. And we throw candy. And we throw candy. <laughs> it's just like a parade. <laughs> anyway, the way you can subscribe is with the blue button. Are we ready for that? <laughs> Zoink! <laughs> Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this uh, video on the internet, and we hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Sunday because we're back to working on the railroad. Oh boy, again. yes. Oh, I've been working on the railroad. See you then. We'll see you. Bye bye. bye.